Welcome to the luxury world. Get inspired with us today and tomorrow. There are many different types of watches on the market, and each one has its own unique set of fans. Some people love Grand Seiko watches, while others avoid them. Why is that? The Grand Seiko brand has received a lot of attention. Some say it's better than Rolex, others that the quality is unmatched, and others still that the value is astonishing. There are many reasons we should get a Grand Seiko. Here are three important things you should be aware of before doing so. First, Grand Seiko watches are not Swiss. When you think of excellent watchmaking, you automatically think of Switzerland. As well as being famous for its cheese, chocolate, and efficient clean rail network, Switzerland is a global epicenter for the fine premium watch. The big three watchmakers are Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, and Vacheron Constantine, all hail from Swiss. The landlocked country has the upper hand. Grand Seiko, on the other hand, can trace its origins a lot further a field in the far eastern realm of Japan. This country is known for precision but applied in a reliable, economical, and affordable way. If you buy Japanese, you're buying sensibly. Fine, but it's not Switzerland. Look at the automobile industry. You want something luxurious? You go British. Emotive? Italian. Powerful? German. If you want the car you can drive without servicing for 300,000 miles that costs less than the extended leather trimming option in any of the others, you go Japanese. This is the world's way and has been the beginning of time. Or has it? If you go back some three or 400 years, you won't find Swiss watchmaking. Instead, the Germans, the British, and the French are at the forefront of this mechanical technology with Jean-Antoine Le Pen pioneering miniaturization in the 1700s Thomas Tompion setting the standard for high-accuracy clockmaking in the 1600s, and Peter Henlin being credited with inventing the first pocket watch back in the 1500s. However, the industrial revolution and technological advancements combined with the stubbornness of the clockmakers who refused to embrace new manufacturing methods left the business vulnerable. With little else to do during the winter, Swiss farmers switched to creating watch parts for a small profit, which they assembled using modern and industrial techniques, and thus, Swiss watchmaking was founded. Sounds familiar, right? A rising market using cheaper labor and technological innovation to produce an affordable product to dominate the market. The Swiss experienced the same thing with Japanese quartz timepieces in the 1970s. I suppose what goes around comes around. Number 2. Grand Seiko watches almost destroyed Swiss watchmaking. Speaking about quartz watches, it was a Christmas present from Seiko to the Swiss in 1969 that precipitated the industry's most devastating blow to mechanical watchmaking. The Astron, a small gold watch powered by a battery instead of a spring, signaled the beginning of the Japanese incitement of the affordable quartz watch and the end of Swiss domination. Seiko came close to destroying the whole Swiss watch industry. This is the smoke in the messy ordeal, the fire started at the decade start. Surprisingly, it wasn't advanced technology that signaled the beginning of the end. Electronic watchmaking was no new thing. The Swiss had already been experimenting with electron-powered watches long before Seiko did. Even Patek Philippe foresaw change coming and produced the first fully electronic clock as early as 1956. No, this shift in power began with the first Grand Seiko, a mechanical timepiece. At this point, Seiko was only known in Japan, a domestic brand that had stayed out of the Swiss business since its founding in 1881, just six years after Audemars Piguet and 24 years before Rolex, until the first Grand Seiko was made in 1960. It was also made with a specific goal in mind, to beat the Swiss at their own game by winning the prestigious Swiss Observatory Trials Accuracy Competitions. Seiko opened two factories, pitting them against each other to build the best watch to accelerate the process. Seiko had risen from 10th place in 1963 to 9th place in 1966. However, 1967 came in 4th place. The trials were subsequently cancelled and never held again. As a result, in 1968, Seiko Seiko competed in the Concours de Genevieve, where it placed 4th through 10th. But what of the top 3 places? The Beta 21, a Swiss concept quartz movement, won both of these awards. This meant that Seiko had created the world's most precise mechanical watch. The Concours, like the trials, were never held again.
The Astron was a foregone conclusion by Christmas 1969. The Swiss had abandoned Seiko in favor of quartz technology. However, as technology advanced, costs fell and the Swiss were priced out of the market, leaving Seiko to invest even more in electronics and automated production, eventually becoming the world's largest watchmaker. We are now halfway through, but before we continue, if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notification bell and stay Stay updated with what's new and what's hot in the world of luxury. Lastly, Seiko supports quartz technology. Grand Seiko and indeed Seiko began creating watches using mechanical movements which they continue to do today. Manual, an automatic, high beat, Grand Seiko makes it all. Grand Seiko, however, still uses quartz, unlike many of Switzerland's high-end watchmakers. Grand Seiko doesn't just dabble in low-cost technology, it thrives on it. For many Swiss firms attempting to rebound from the quartz catastrophe, quartz movement offered a more affordable way for customers to acquire timepieces. The final vestiges of quartz have begun to slip away as the industry has recovered, and the Swiss watch has regained its premium status. Not so with Grand Seiko. The brand has doubled down, investing not only in quartz manufacture but also in quartz mechanical hybrid called Spring Drive. A spring drive movement utilizes a mechanical mainspring to spin a glide wheel, producing a charge that vibrates a crystal. An electromagnet controlled by the crystal then acts as a brake to control the velocity of that same glide wheel, the escapement, if you will, from which the power to the hands is drawn, resulting in a smooth sweep around the dial. Perhaps you'd think that quartz would be obsolete within the Grand Seiko range with this advanced hybrid technology, but that's not the case. It's far from it because quartz movements do not just fill a few of the inexpensive watches. There are a lot of them. And it goes even further than that as Grand Seiko actively honors its 9F quartz movement. There is pride there in a quartz movement. However, there's more to it than meets the eye. Both competing Seiko factories were repurposed in line with the incoming surge in electronics after going after chronometric certification with Grand Seiko in the 1960s. One became Seiko Instruments, which specialized in precise mechanical and electrical components, while Seiko Epson focused on microprocessors and imaging equipment. This is a lot of expertise. It enables Grand Seiko to manufacture each and every component of the quartz movements. The quartz crystal, the coil, and even the battery are the ones who make everything. With that level of control, Grand Seiko can do things with its 9F quartz caliber that no other watchmaker can. The 9F, for example, has 133 pieces that are all beautifully designed to match the mechanical movements. That's almost a given. But consider this, the date shifts in one two-thousandth of a second, the temperature compensated motor pulses in pairs to move the large Grand Seiko hands without reducing battery life, the second hand is preloaded, ensuring no backlash, the internals is sealed in an airtight capsule with jewel peephole for boosted long-term reliability, and most amazingly, each quartz crystal is aged using an electric current for three whole months before it can be deemed reconditioned. All of this adds up to a precision of 10 seconds per year. After all, there's a reason Grand Seiko is so proud. These three factors should be taken into account before purchasing a Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko should be considered over a Swiss comparable because of its lack of Swissness, devastatingly effective approach to accuracy, and insistence on pursuing all sorts of watchmaking. The question is, would you consider it? Tell us your thoughts in the comment section below. Just so you know, we love to hear from you. And as we end today's video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Luxury World. See you again in the next video.